Jordan Walker is back. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Saturday, June 3rd. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And let's talk about the return of Jordan Walker, who... Over his last 15 games at AAA, kind of figured something out. He was batting 311 with a 403 on base, slugging 541, three homers, five doubles, one steal. Uh, plate discipline looked pretty good as well. And Scott, I know you saw a few comments and interview about Jordan Walker, you know, talking about the things that he was working on. Uh, what'd you find out? And is he a must add if he was dropped? Well, yeah, I think what changed for him that allowed him to take off like that was he stopped following the mandate to hit the ball in the air more. What he said in the interview was, there's no point if I try to hit the ball in the air if I'm not hitting the ball at all. So he just went back to his usual approach, got his usual numbers. I have to say, you know, obviously it was reported all along that one of the reasons he was sit down was to work on hitting the ball in the air more. But I thought there would be like, I thought the the behind-the-scenes process was a little more detailed than that. Like, I thought they were showing him how to hit the ball in the air more. And and based on his reaction here, it sounds more like, no, they just told him, go down and hit the ball in the air more. Figure it out. Which doesn't seem fair. Like, that's, that's not like a light switch thing you can just turn on and off. So I don't know what they were expecting. It just seems to kind of fit into the the pattern we've seen with the Cardinals all year where they don't, they're not coming across as especially competent right now. And I don't know if it's just a string of bad decisions or I I don't know. They've been a highly regarded organization for a long time, but weird stuff, but yeah, exciting Jordan Walker's back. And, um, you know, obviously he didn't exactly live up to expectations the first time he was up, but he's dual eligible third base in the outfield. He's arguably the top prospect in baseball still. And I think if you can afford to roster him, Absolutely should. Again, he is 70% rostered, so Jordan Walker could be out there in some shallower leagues. Let's get to your five prospects on the verge of getting called up. Ellie De La Cruz and Christian Encarnacion Strand, both with the Cincinnati Reds. Ronnie Mauricio with the Mets. Colton Kowser with the Orioles. And Gavin Williams with the Guardians. Feels like every week, Scott, we're here talking about these Reds prospects. When are they going to get the call? I think there's a little bit more smoke because we're seeing these articles come out about Jonathan India's availability and they might be looking to trade him. I think we're getting closer. I just, I don't know if we're there yet. What are your latest thoughts on uh, Ellie De La Cruz? Yeah, I've noticed just in this last week, the Reds, folks on the Reds beat have basically come to the consensus it'll be very soon for Ellie De La Cruz. And specifically... I noticed that the the conversation around him has gone from will he come up or won't he to what happens to the Reds infield when he comes up. I saw three different Reds beat writers basically write that same article talking about Jonathan India, etc. Um, so it's going to be soon. Uh, uh, we've seen we've seen Ellie De La Cruz's plate discipline improve dramatically, and so it should be soon. <laughs> the other name I just wanted to ask you about real quick, Scott, before we uh, sign off here is Oswald Peraza. I know you wrote about him in your prospect report as well. And uh, we're recording this on Thursday night. He hit another home run on Thursday. He now has something like 10 homers in his past 14 games in the minors. And he's crushing it right now. I just don't know where Oswald Peraza could fit in with the Yankees. Josh Donaldson, Coming back over the weekend, they still have Anthony Volpe. I don't think they're ready to pull the plug on, on Volpe yet. Um, do you see a way that Oswald Peraza works his way back in? I don't see exactly where the Yankees would put Oswald Peraza now, especially they just have had Josh Donaldson coming off the IL. So things are even more crowded now. We might have to wait for an injury to see him again. The thing is, as productive as he's been at AAA, and it's been great, I don't think the buy-in will be as high on his return trip to the majors. It's hard to recapture that hype from the initial call-up, and obviously he disappointed us last time we saw him. Doesn't mean he can't go on to have a great career, but 
I don't see him as a particularly high priority stash, at least not relative to those other five names you rattled off. Ronnie Mauricio, for instance, I think he is more likely to be up for the Mets before Peraza is for the Yankees. There's been some talk, some reports recently that uh, Ronnie Mauricio could take over at second base with Jeff McNeil coming a full-time left fielder. And so that may be happening soon. Also, um, Colton Kowser, who's currently hurt, supposed to be back in the matter of days. Cedric Mullins just went on the aisle with a groin injury, though. And they're going to need to replace this production somehow. It's not going to be Aaron Hicks, I'll tell you that much. So I think <laughs> once Colton Kowser is back in a matter of days, they'll uh, they'll they'll speed up his timeline to get him in the majors. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> 